t t test it then. It's your guy. Madness KMA and I'm back once again, spell it correct, don't get it twisted, the M-A-D-D-N-E-S-S-K-M-A -S 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 on all platforms apart from Instagram which is DJ Madness Official. Anyway, let's go with this. I've got a video today that I'm looking at um, some of my downtime. So when I'm looking on the internet and you look for the golden era of house and garage leading into the later phrase of UK garage being part of the foundation, I like to look at certain things and get a memory, you know, got a memory lane as we all do. But what I find is on YouTube, I can only find um, big up to nothing sorted.com because if it weren't for them, I wouldn't see most of the footage and get a reminiscence on anything with House and Garage. Some events from UK Garage used to have camera crews like Sun City uh, and, and maybe twice as nice, but others didn't really concentrate on video footage at the time to document our history and our formula format and how we got down in electrifying events back in the day, such as your Camden Palace, your Bagley's Film Studios. You can't find no footage of UK Garage or House and Garage events from back in those times, right? Um, it's sad because we should have documented it, but we didn't look at it that way. The grassroots was with us. The stems came off and the new branches came like the grime era, when they had their own lane that came across from House and Garage, when they created their own path off of House and Garage, a UK garage, um, they documented everything. Risky roads, there were so many different documentaries out, um, and videos, DVDs, it was, it, there's an abundance on there. If you look for grime events, you would find Eskimo dance, and those monumental times, last man standing and all these things with the grime events, so beat them up to the maximum because they knew what they were doing in that aspect. We, as the garage lot, had building the, the infrastructure of the movement and at the time in the early 90s to mid 90s um, and then obviously later on in the, in, in the later parts we still didn't concentrate on filming or documenting because as we was doing it with pirate radio that was like our documentary and that was us documenting the future by tape recording those on cassette from radio shows that some people are still fortunate to have those tapes of today, right? Or if you go on Garage Tape Packs or um, Take Me Back to Garage Archives, you've got those um, shows that you can, people's reliving today, right? But look for those events when you look for Garage. You can't find them. You would see some Garage Nation events. Again, down to nothingsorted.com. If it weren't for Mox and what he did, we wouldn't see those events. But what do you see? You see the so-called headliners. You see the same people all the time one person in particular and you know who he is nothing said okay cool so we look at those events but where are the rest of them we see some events where you might see a dream team look for tough jam if you can try and find a car tough enough brown set you'll be lucky because you might find two footage that flies about and again down to nothing sorted.com so it just got me thinking when I'm looking through the stack, right? And I'm going through YouTube of an evening and I'm like, I want to listen to some House and Garage. I want to see some sets. You will see a couple, maybe a few handful of Heartless crew, right? But the rest of it, the core UK Garage elements, the DJs, the stations, Freak FM, uh, Magic FM, London Underground, these leading stations of those times, you can't find not one footage. Now I do know with Freak FM and Freaking New events at Camden Palace, there are some unseen footages that um, Hooligan69, um, one of the owners, founders, he's got it somewhere on a tape cassette perhaps. Will we see that and ever see the light of day? No, we probably won't because we would have seen it already. Big up Julio69, that's my family tree. Yes, Primo, we should have some of that footage out there. But it's again, Going back to things that I've spoke about for years on my radio show, but um, in the in the 2000s, I spoke a lot about what's happening with House and Garage, what's happening with UK Garage, where is it? It's only going to be lost in translation as we move on. Here's some food for thought. If you love soul music from back in the days, it then went on later on to be called Soul Rare Groove. Garage is now Rare Groove, if you ask me, and it will be in the future as in like people's producing music today but they're not really part of the house and garage or uk garage scene full stop right think about it you've got many people out there that are making big 
soulful garage tunes but they're not they're just really electronic produced tunes that sound familiar to air like garage music but they're not in the scene they're not part of the scene they came from a new wave which is not a bad thing I'm not knocking anybody don't get me wrong but it, it just kind of gets to me because I knew this would happen you can have festivals today of course you've got garage nation festivals you've got 51st state festivals some festivals that are out there that do UK garage is it main stage material anymore do you see those acts performing? Yeah, you do. You see Soul Solid, you see Heart and the Screw, um, and you see the usual suspects like Pied Piper, uh, Masters of Ceremonies, DT, um, these guys doing their thing. However, right, the core sets that I'm looking for back in the days, Powerhouse, Waterdon Road, Bagley's Film Studios, could have been five arenas worth of great house and garage music. You can't find no footage of it. So I'm scrolling through and I'm like, wow, these grime guys, they did the right thing. It's documented amongst the time. That's facts. Because it will always be there. It's on YouTube. If it got taken down for some reason, it's back up again on somebody else's channel. And there you can see it, the progression of that music, that stem that originated from the tree and grassroots of House Garage UK Garage, right? So it's exactly what I thought it would be. And I forecasted this many years ago when I said on radio shows, where is garage music going? Where are these promoters taking it? It's rinsing it out and sucking the, the life out of it, pause. And then you've got the festivals which are on any patch of grass. Anyone that knows my shows in the past, you would know I've spoke these words and those terms for so many years, right? Check this out. The golden era of garage. And to the present day, we're here exploring the uh, evolution of music genres over the time, in particular House and Garage, uh, diving into the depths of history and the genre that experienced a remarkable journey uh, from its inception to the current state. In the early to mid 90s, London witnessed the birth of UK Garage, um, a genre rooted in the soulful melodies, vocals, two-step beats, 4-4, some breakbeat elements. It was a scene initially embraced for ladies. We had ladies from the smallest clubs as we grew to the thousands. It was the ladies first. I myself started off on Freak in 93, going into 94, and I was a host originally, and I always used to have this speech that I would say, ladies, step forward, you are the entourage. I don't want to see man in front of me in the stage. It was the ladies, them, and we packed out the club, sardine packed, like 80% women. That's what it was about. And it changed, and I'll tell you when. It was a scene initially embraced by the ladies, as I said before, with a vibrant and inclusive atmosphere that was second to none. Garage music was about unity. It was about dancing. It was about positive vibes with women at the forefront of the audience and especially in front of my stage, right? Then the later part of the 90s, it was the inception of the cruise. The crews came into place, Heartless Crew was the first, and then it went on to Soul Solid Crew, and you know, the rest is history with how many people that was involved in these crews. Basically male dominated, beer mans in these crews. The exception of about one or two female artists within these crews, right? And um, that's when it all changed, because the scene was thriving on the, the, the DJs as the pilots, and the MCs were the co-pilots to a DJ set, right? Which is what enhanced the sound to, you know, shout out to this one and a couple one, two bars here and there. And that was the vibe. Now the evolution of music means that it's gonna change. Of course, no problem. When the MCs started coming more in, like Heart the Screw, Fonty, Bushkin and Mighty Mo, then they gave more of a MC in format like dancehall elements into Garage, which was welcomed by some of us um, and shunned away from the others saying, rah, these men are too coarse. Oh my God, they're talking pom pom lyrics. Oh my days, we would never say that in Garage. We'd, they're doing it, they're outlandish, they're doing their ways, but look at them today, you rate and respect and how you salute these guys, right? It's just, man, the man, them from long time for the man, them. I 
Uh, then it moved on to Soul Solid Crew, Pay As You Go, and it got sticky at those moments because if you've got a, 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 a bag of man coming on stage, we never had that before in House and Garage, right? You could have the people that was working, meant to be working, doing their thing, but these men come with entourage that was like 20, 30, 40 deep on the stage, right? Intimidated is what it did for a lot of the older school DJs um, who was intimidated by these guys coming on, spitting a whole lot of grease, a bag of lyrics. When you heard people like, God's gift. Hey, let me get this, hey, let me get this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, my brother, hold on. There's no way, there's no way. 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 Hold on, hold on, listen. We don't know some of us here. Not going to have a look. Some of us are not out here. And the news are not out here. Major Ace, these voices were like rah, but to me, I was like, oh, these men are bringing dance all to the scene. Big them up because that's heavy. It works with the program and the heavier beats, heavier sides, because we can play gal tune, them man there can play the harder tunes and go for the MC bass factor. No problem, right? <laughs> did is it scared away the ladies right because these guys no disrespect but you came up on stage saying man dem this big up the man dem that man's over here big up this man what happened oh yeah big up the gallon and it was just a little bit of a shout to the ladies nothing really do you know what i mean but then the ladies started to become a younger audience that were coming out to see these guys perform, right? So when they would come out, they were adopting that same type of mentality, that more of a street mentality, that more of a aggressive mentality. And then they were coming, you know, as it is today, you see it online where ladies uh, are supposed to be ladies, right? And then they're talking like man, and they're talk calling each other bruv, and all this kind of thing in, in relation to a male uh, term. They're lost, uh, you know, they need to be found, right? Come on, find yourself is what we used to say. The once female dominated genre began shifting its focus towards men, uh, which led a change to the atmosphere, the vibe, and the overall experience of UK garage events. <laughs> of UK Garage and this current state, you will still see people going out for going out sake. It's not about going out to see your favorite DJs and MCs anymore. It's about going out for going out sake. So if you've got festivals on any patch of grass, remember these phrases from our radio shows, then you will understand what I mean. Um, these things are just there, they're events. People's going through, they don't care what genre's on. They don't care what DJs they're listening to. They might say, I'm going to look forward to who? Put comments down below, please, who you look forward to. If you're a true UK garage raver, what do you look forward to seeing? Who is your favorite artist that you still say rocks the stage with some sort of performance? Because what I do see is online on TikTok or Instagram, you will see the footage that people post and say, it's a movie. It was the biggest set ever. Wow, but you forget that the footage is there to see. No, it ain't. Maybe you know about the forward that you think is a forward now, which means getting the crowd energy and, you know, all the way through and singing some of the sing-along tunes that we all know and love. However, when that's rinsed out over and over again, it's the same old argument. DJs could be playing from the same record box, right? It's true, and they don't want to advance anymore. There's only a couple people that do that, and you can say on your hand, on one hand, how many DJs and how many outfits do that, mixing and blending a forward to get the crowd's reaction, and so they say they have a great time. Do you know what I mean? As in, like it was like a concert, but it was in clubland. That's how we did it before it moved on to festivals. Now, where people just, in my opinion, go out for just going out sake. <laughs> Probably the dream team, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely my favourite. Yeah. What about the men? You're two pretty glamorous women. What about the men? What are they saying? Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're wicked, mate. No comment, no comment. Yeah, they're wicked. All the geezers are wicked. Oh, the men are wicked. The men are wicked. The men, the men are good looking men. Good looking men. 
lucky. The ladies are very lucky. Today we find ourselves in a different landscape. Festivals have uh, lost touch with the genre's roots. That's facts. And the vibe is nothing like what it used to be. DJs and MCs now uh, um, out there just making ends meet as far as I'm concerned, from paycheck to paycheck, and they're heavily booked, still doing events. So these events are still out there. However, it's never gonna be what it was. Like I said, soul music, rare groove music, it's gonna be garage in the future. It's gonna become extinct where it's just, oh yeah, we used to love that sound, we used to love that genre. Oh yeah, those favorite tunes. Oh yes, this is the underground ones and oh, these big tunes that people used to play. Some of them getting sold for hundreds of pounds on eBay and, dis uh, and Discogs where you can sell one piece of vinyl as for collectors. But this is what, you see what I'm saying? How it's moving forward is got to that stage now where garage music of the past was like collector's items now. It's not about who's playing new tunes on stage because the producers of today are making electronic music which sounds like garage, but it's not garage. It's just a sound alike. And I you love the ladies. <laughs> argue that is a lack of innovation and substance in contemporary garage music of today. There is a glimmer of hope out there. I sent a WhatsApp out the other day when I saw they got another event coming up um, at the Royal Albert Hall. I have to big up my Don, DJ Spoonie, because that is where garage should have evolved to today. In a, in, you know what I mean? In stages, as in like the maturity of garage music, then you would say that's where it is. An orchestra band, for example, as what he does with his orchestra band. Tonight, musically, it's going to be one of the best nights you've ever had in your life. Please give it up, the Sugar Babes. I'll bring you flowers. Promises, no, say no, be home by both controlling me and that for out with the girls, but leaving with the boy next door. Can you feel me performing with the same artists performing those hit tracks on stage? Mature, it's a vibe you have to hail and salute and respect that because that's where garage music should be. But he's the only one that's doing that. The rest of them, which had a platform, certain people labeled as the best of the best on top tier of garage DJs and outfits and record labels. You know, certain people had a responsibility to create more of a legacy and take it on board with their stem, with their essence from the old school and school the new youngers and the new wave of garage producers to come forward and, you know, make it a whole scene growing up huge, like hip hop music. It's still huge. It's never gonna be the essence of the old school. That's facts, but it's still there as a huge empire. Ask garage music, where is it today? Where? But it's on the big main stage like Royal Albert Hall. These grand performances where orchestras are performing um, with a great testament to the genre's potential for maturity and sophistication. So in conclusion, I had to drop this video as a Mad Reacts type of thing, but at the same time within the series that talks about garage music, and music genres that mean something to me and my timeline. Now again, being part of the foundation, the passion that we had for House and Garage to UK Garage is something unique. It was like each one of us on different radio stations, those radio stations were the YouTube of today and they had a major part to play in the music that we listen to today. There's no pirates out there anymore. There's only one or two that you could say is playing it. But again, who cares? No one, because the market got saturated by all these different kind of sounds. Younger generations started growing up listening to certain types of garage music that sound, well, certain types of electronic music that sounds like garage, and that's what they think it is. So they don't care about the past. There's some people that do, but that's not enough. 
because the scene's gonna become rare groove. And it's gonna be like, oh yeah, do you remember that? Oh, do you remember when we used to rave out to Garage? Us older heads are gonna be saying that, but the younger generation, some of them do catch the vibe and wanna roll with the underground side of it. You know, you've got the Garage House slot that do their events and, you know, big them up as well, because they're kind of created, they've created their own path and that type of thing, but it's a small niche market at the moment when it was in its thousands before. In a one Saturday, up and down the country in the UK, thousands of people's in attendance in London, multiple events, and then up in the country, you've got Birmingham, Manchester, all these places that was a massive part to do with UK Garage, but you don't get that anymore. You get a Sidewinder event. Now, these are the events that you would find on YouTube, going back to what I was saying at the beginning, right? Again, due to nothingsorted.com filming these events. You've got the grime side, or the early grime side of it, but of course the garage DJs and some of the sets that you might see, a Master Steps or, um, you know, a Jason K, rest in peace, and you know certain sets that you might see but nothing of his full entirety like the one video that was uploaded onto YouTube of Sun City at the Hippodrome and you know I've used pieces of that in, in some of my uh, previous videos and that's about it you won't find nothing else you know you've got to think about events like Twice As Nice you've got to think about events like uh, Pure Silk you've got to think about these kind of events that were major parts of it rags to riches so do people still care about UK Garage that's the question and I want you to answer that below in the comments. Do you care about House and Garage or UK Garage anymore? Are you just going out for going out sakes when it comes to these festivals? You know, you'll have these festivals each year that take place and do their thing and I'm not putting them down because they're doing what they can or what they think it is. But I said it a long time ago, the culture that was building with the key promoters of the scene back in the 90s had an element of care towards that genre because it was the garage culture that we was building at the time. If you was part of it, you will understand exactly what I meant. If you were at the top tier, second tier, third or fourth, but you was part of the 90s, uh, the core elements and essence of House and Garage UK Garage, then you was part of something real. How many people say to me now, Madness, but you don't play out no more. Madness, you're not on radio no more. I've got offers. People say they want to do that. I've just, I can't. I can't, to be true to myself, I can't go out there and just do what everybody else is doing and just go along with the robotic side of it and it's just so generic. It's not original anymore. It's already been done because we done that long time ago. Anything they're doing now, it's already been done in a certain way, just regurgitated in another way today, right? Has it been overshadowed by grime and left in a time warp? Yeah, it did. What I need you to do is leave your comments down below and let's get interactive and have a discussion on this. To all the core fans that are supporting us on the channel, do watch out because we have something special in the making. It's in the filming process and we're, we're going through a whole load of it. But once we get, I'm not even gonna say too much, but it's gonna be something that you're gonna recognize, familiar to air, and it's gonna be informative and funny as hell, right? You need to watch out for that, it's coming soon, all right?